Hey, what's up everybody? Robbie Row one 2 here. Um, today's top topic is going to be self-confidence and conviction. I uh, want to dive into a couple important topics regarding the, the overall topic of what I just mentioned. Um, for those of you guys who are tuning into the podcast, welcome. Um, be sure to head on over to www.therobbyroshow.com forward slash confidence. That will take you to a page in which you'll hear all of the links and you'll hear, uh, actually you'll see the video of me if you guys are just podcast subscribers. Um, be, sure to, be sure to check that page out. First and foremost, thank you to Rake Baseball Company for the dope shirt. Um, you win or you learn. That's the name of the game. Should have just talked about that today, huh? While wearing the shirt. Didn't think of it until now. That's embarrassing. No, it's not. Here we go. Self-confidence and conviction. The reason I wanted to talk about this today is because this morning I posted, um, you guys have probably all seen it now, a video of uh, in the College World Series, a pitcher striking out a guy and then they'd show him walking off the field and he's like mother effing the guy. Um, and I was, I was kind of contemplating and going back and forth with myself like, hey, should I post this? Should I not? Because um, like me personally, I'm not an advocate for like swearing, for like, you know, sh that type of play. But I really wanted to take the, uh, the underlying piece from what I got from that clip in regards to it being the College World Series, in, in regards to it being, there's just a lot of emotion out there. Um, you know, there's just, a, there's a lot going on in that clip that I wanted to post. And, uh, and, I, and I guess it's my fault, you know, knowing that there's not a lot of individuals that read captions and they just see the video and they're like, oh, Robbie wants me to strike a guy out and cuss him out. That's not the point. So I want to highlight, um, like I said, the topics f uh, for this segment, piggybacking off that post in self-confidence and conviction. So we all know as pitchers, as athletes in general, that confidence is uh, is really important, right? We don't know, we don't we don't grade it on a scale of most important or least importance. We just know that as athletes, we need confidence. So therefore, um, we can find success because if we don't have confidence, then um, then we really don't have that that motivation to. Uh, be successful, I think personally, and then conviction for me is a, more of like a, a you know a pitcher's word that I you know I put it in right there with confidence because it's kind of one and the same, but more from a, a pitcher's mentality. And uh, the biggest thing for me, if you take one thing from this whole entire segment, it's the importance of understanding that it always starts internally. Um, and this is going to be the, me walking the fine line because I don't want to sit here and say that you know external influences, you know moms, dads, coaches, teammates, all of those things that can can assist in confidence. I don't want to say that's bad, right? But we all know in the sports world that our performance is like a roller coaster, especially in baseball where it's a game built on failure. That there's there's some games that we're not going to do good. There's some games that we're not going to um, you know, live up to the expectation or we're, we're just going to fail. And I think we all know that that's okay, you know, if it's a one game or two games, whatever. Um, but what I'm trying to get at is that you can't have the, um, the external influences be like your anchor for your self-confidence because that's going to be a wavering thing. You know, it's not always going to be there. Um, the separator from the, the, the best to ever do it and yourself that's watching it is the best individuals, the best athletes out there, they could fail a hundred times out of a hundred, but they still find a way uh, within themselves to remain confident. I love listening to like Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Ray Allen, like got the, I know this is a basketball reference, but the best shooters of all time, um, you know, they'll miss say like 10 shots, but they'll say like, well, that 11th one, that 11th one is going in. So what helps aid in that, right? Um, so that's gonna be my second talk, talking point. Sorry guys, this is the first time I'm talking today. It is early in the morning. I apologize for the inability to speak. <laughs> but uh, the second talking point I wanted to hit on was, was how is it produced? Um, you know, like we know kind of what it is and why it's beneficial, why it's important, why we should have it. Um, but do we know like how to grasp it, how to have that? Like what separates the guys like the Stephs, Clays in, in the basketball realm or the Trouts um, you know, 
insert or Chris Sale, you know, another pitcher. What separates those guys is like mindset from the confidence, right? Because we can talk about one or two things as far as like, are they confident because those guys know, uh, like for Chris Sale example, is he confident because he knows he has a 98 mile an hour fastball and a wipeout slider? Yeah, maybe, but is, is his mindset gonna waver if he goes into an outing without that 90 mile an hour fastball and wipeout slider? Probably not, you know, because he's gonna stay constant uh, or constant, consistent with his mindset. And same with like the greatest shooters of all time in basketball is I think they've done so much of it and they've seen very good results that that instills a self-confidence in their ability, um, you know, through time and through reps and through seeing it, visualizing it, that they can miss 10 or 11 or 12 in a row um, or, you know, they can, baseball players can have five or bad outings in a row, but that sixth one, or hitters can get out 20 times in a row, but that 21st one, it's just, uh, it's kind of that, um, you know, that sense of mindset mentality, if you will. And then the, uh, the next thing for me personally, I'm a big believer in, um, in like having confidence through trusting your work ethic and trusting the amount and the and the emphasis that you put on like the attention to details i'm not trying to sound like a broken record when i'm talking about you know the attention to details but i think it comes full circle in regards to okay maybe you're a guy that continuously goes out and doesn't see results how do those guys get confidence well my encouragement to you would be hey put in all of the the work um, be smart about your work be super efficient do the right things, um, you know, go about it the right way. All of these little things do, and then trust that, trust that work ethic, trust that sense of, um, you know, like, shoot, I did everything I could. At the end of the day, I can look at myself in the mirror and go, you know what? I did everything I did. I, I controlled everything I could control. If I go out and fail, I can live with myself. If I, if I go out and success, like, I know why. And I think that for me um, has been a big anchor, you know, in my career, in my journey with anything in life. You know, even the littlest things as far as like preparing for a podcast. I know it sounds super weird, but there's sometimes I'm talking to someone that I've never talked to that's kind of a big name and I, I like get nervous, but the ability to sit back and go, okay, did I prepare the best that I knew how? And am I going into this fully prepared and fully ready for any like obstacle that throws my way like absolutely because i've already kind of you know seen myself go through it and i've prepared for it um i'm just trying to throw like different analogies it's kind of the same thing with like a test right in school or in a subject you go into this test yeah you're still going to be have these like anxious nervous feelings because it's a test maybe it's a big test maybe it's a final whatever it is um but those eventually can subside knowing that you did everything you can do um, as far as like being prepared for that test rather than like if you didn't prepare and then you go into it and then you have like zero self-confidence because you know like deep down or even on the surface level that you didn't prepare and that you're gonna flunk. It's the same thing, um, you know, that's why I'm such a big advocate on preparation because I think uh, at the root of preparation is confidence. That allows us to be confident um, knowing that we're going into battle fully prepared. Um, I have another analogy, but I guess I, I, I'll, yeah, I'll save it for later. Um, and then now let's talk about conviction. Cause like I said in the beginning is like, I think conviction is, um, you know, is, is right there with confidence as far as like a, from a pitching mentality, right? Conviction, um, kind of goes hand in hand with what I was talking about as far as being prepared and, and like trusting that preparation, trusting yourself, trusting your instincts, because I sent out a tweet, like you can't have trust without confidence. And if you don't have trust, you have doubt and doubt leads to failure. So think about like conviction, right? We often get stuck in this, this and I'm gonna kind of switch gears very briefly, but as a pitcher, we can get stuck in this pattern of just being like, okay, that's the sign I want. Yes, that's the sign I want. And I know I'm walking another tightrope because I know there's certain programs, high schools, colleges, travel balls that like the coach will call the game and call the signs and you don't really have a say, you just shake or nod your head yes. But in, uh, you know, once you get to the next level as far as like professional baseball and, and beyond, like it's on you. 
and that's where I think conviction plays a huge role in like determining your self-confidence, determining your success, because if you're not convicted in something that you're doing slash throwing, then that self-confidence in that particular moment is going to go down. Now, the flip side of that is if you're 130 percent convicted in, in that moment, your self-confidence, uh, you know, is going to go way up. And no matter if it's the wrong or right thing, you know, that's a variable. But no matter what it is, it's like the fact that you are 130% invested in that moment is I deem it as like the, the, the right answer. You know, I, I personally would encourage guys to look at it like, you know, even if it's the right thing, um, or even if it's the, 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 yeah, sorry. Even if it's the right thing, like the right pitch and you're not 130% invested in it, then therefore I would say that's the wrong pitch because whatever it takes to get your mind wrapped around like the conviction in that particular moment um, is, is what you need to do. So that kind of goes hand in hand with that self-confidence, right? Because I, I know I've been through it. I've been through it for multiple years in my career where like I wasn't convicted in anything right? Like I, I, I just was going out there and I was like, man, I really, really hope that this goes well, <laughs> you know? And it wasn't like foot on the gas pedal, like here we freaking go, man. I'm convicted. I trust myself and, and let's ride because, you know, I'll be the first one to tell you, like there's some times, there's certain occasions where we can work as hard as we can, uh, as hard as we can. We can work as smart as we can. We can do all the little things, do everything right. And then at the end of the day, we can still fail. And that, that, uh, that weighs in on you. Trust me, I know, I've been there. So then it's like, you gotta ask the question, okay, where do I, where do I go moving forward? And that's gonna be something that looks different for every single individual. And I can't encourage you enough to start identifying those certain you know, specific things that are gonna allow you to be the best version of yourself. I know I've talked in the past about how I kinda got over that hump and, and what were the things that, that I utilized to allow myself to you know, maximize what I had, maximize my potential. But um, you know, there's a ton of variables in it. But if you take one thing from this is like the self-confidence portion of it, right? Like I said, we, we all know that it's important. We all know that it's super beneficial within, you know, really everything in life. If you're, if you're a dude that's going to, you know, talk to a girl in person, hashtag 2019, not on text, in person, like if you're not confident, if you're not confident in your ability to like speak, then you know, whoever is going to sense that. And then all of a sudden it's just a completely different game. That's why, like, I always say, my dad always told me, like, when I was younger, confidence breeds success, man. So, you know, if it's, if it's you, like, having to fake conviction, and I can have a whole nother Pitching Talks segment on faking conviction, but uh, whatever it is, you know, like, you need to identify what that's going to be for you and, and how to best go about that. But um, just to kind of round this out, the biggest key points for me, man, is, is uh, understanding that, that, that uh, self-confidence is, is always going to start and pretty much end internally. Like you first have to, um, you first have to know how to, how to get that, like how to rely on yourself, not rely on others for self-confidence because, you know, we're all human beings. I think we all thrive with positive energy and other people, external influences saying, Hey, you look really good today. Or, Hey, you know, that fastball was, had some life on it or whatever it is. But like I said earlier, is that's not always going to be there. Um, so you got to identify a way in which that could be, um, done either, you know, self thought visualization, whatever it is internally first. And then, um, and then again, how to ident or identify how that's going to be produced for you. Like I could sit here and say, Hey, this is how I do it. And this is what's worked for me. But you know, at the end of the day, that's maybe not going to work for you. And I would kind of be doing a disservice because my, you know, my duty, my, I feel like my, my sense of responsibility is to give you guys the tools and, and better equip you for your journey. And the only way I can do that is to encourage you, um, to encourage all you guys to listen in watching. Like these are the types of things that you need to identify and, uh, and ask yourself these questions because I'll tell you what, man, when I was in high school, my self-confidence just came from, oh, well, I'm seeing results. I'm just better, everyone. You know, I'm throwing 90 plus in high school, like no one can hit me. I got five pitches, no one can hit me. And it was just a product of the results. And then as soon as I got into pro ball, like I was just another guy, 
you know, there's there was really nothing special about me besides my hair at the time, and um, and even that like didn't really produce a whole lot of self confidence. But and then you know I, I started learning like okay, I can't just rely on you know the results because they're not always going to be there. So now I need to see like okay, is it is it something that I can do in a bullpen to give me the the confidence of like maybe visualizing that four seam fastball down and away that one that one pitch that I that I execute in a bullpen like okay that's the one that I'm going to I'm going to visualize I'm going to put that in the memory bank and I'm going to replay it every single time before a pitch you know or whatever whatever that thing is that gives you that confidence right like I said it's going to be different for everyone and I can't encourage you guys enough to start identifying and um, you know kind of going about that process for yourself and then remember conviction you know either if it's in a specific moment or if it's just your your entire baseball career be convicted in what you do trust your gut trust you know it it, it goes back to that what i just said um you know with regards to that tw that tweet man if you don't have trust you have doubt and if you have doubt then that's going to lead you down a path of a failure and i say that not to like be disrespectful because I've been there personally, man. It's a it's a tough road to get out of. Um, it's an easy road to get into. So, um, you know. With that being said, if there's anyone that wants to dive like further into this conversation, um, you know, I have a consultation service. I don't know that a lot of people know about. If you guys are still listening or watching, um, and and you want to spend, you know, like. I think it's like 25 bucks and have a 30 minute phone call conversation with me and just, you know, take nuggets from, from what I'm saying and dive further into this whole thing. And hopefully I can, you know, give you some words of encouragement or some cues or whatever it is to better equip you and better help you for, for your progress. Um, you know, that's on my website, the go to services, you'll see consultation. And, um, yeah, I hope you guys, I, I encourage you guys to check that option out because it's an investment for your career. You know, not even just in baseball, man, but just for like life in general. I think I'm doing too many hand gestures. But anyways, um, self-confidence and conviction, guys. I know it's super easy for me to sit here and just talk about and it's a totally different thing to put into action. But, um, you know, I, the only thing that I can do is to give you those tools and talk about these certain subjects that maybe aren't necessarily talked about in everyday life. But um, for, the, for those of you uh, watching on the video on Instagram, much love. Uh, share it for whoever you think is in need of hearing this. For those of you guys who are listening on the podcast, like I said, therobbyroshow.com forward slash confidence, take you to the page. And um, for those of you guys who did both, that's amazing. Much love. Uh, until next time, God bless and enjoy the rest of y'all's day. See you guys. Robbie's out.